Led Zeppelin are a group that always seem to find themselves entangled in accusations of plagiarism, and every aspect of their music underwent intense scrutiny. While some creative similarities might be coincidental, discussions of, let's call it, artistic borrowing consistently followed the band. Over eight studio albums, Led Zeppelin ascended to the pinnacle of the music industry. However, they openly acknowledged their influences, wearing them as badges of honour, albeit occasionally taking that admiration a step too far. Here are seven instances when Led Zeppelin were accused of plagiarising songs, including perhaps their most famous song of all time. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. We start with Bring It On Home. This track appeared as the closer on their second album, Led Zeppelin II. The song begins and ends with sections featuring Plant's blues harp mixed with his gritty, intimate, whispery vocal. These parts, however, were essentially lifted from Sonny Boy Williams' recording of Bring It On Home, originally penned by Willie Dixon, that he recorded six years prior. Dixon was infuriated upon hearing Zeppelin's work, and the band's defence claiming it was a tribute didn't really hold up in court. Consequently, they were forced to pay an undisclosed amount of money to Dixon and credit him as a songwriter on future releases of the song. Dazed and confused, the second song on our list was released in 1969. It was one of the most regularly performed songs at their concerts, with the group playing it live around 400 times. Of course, Page also performed this song with the Yardbirds, but its origin can actually be traced back to a singer-songwriter named Jake Holmes. It was featured on his 1967 album, Above Ground Sound. Page has asserted that he was unaware of Holmes's rendition, despite the unmistakable similarities in the title and much of the music. Page did, however, rewrite most of the lyrics. Now, allegedly, Page first encountered this song when Jake Holmes opened for the Yardbirds at a Greenwich Village performance. Despite the evident similarities, Holmes actually refrained from pursuing any legal action against Led Zeppelin for many years. He was casual about the whole thing and even went on record and said, what the hell, let him have it. However, in 2010, Holmes finally initiated legal proceedings. I guess he wanted a new car or something. The case was eventually settled out of court and the 2012 Zeppelin live album Celebration Day credits the song as written by Page, inspired by Jake Holmes. Another song Led Zeppelin supposedly lifted from someone else was Black Mountainside. The original in question this time is Bert Yanch's Black Waterside. And off the bat, the song titles sound pretty similar, don't they? Black Mountainside, Black Waterside. Jimmy Page has openly expressed his admiration for Yanch's work, but maybe this time he took it a bit too far. Yanch, in a 2007 interview with Classic Rock, pointed out a peculiar behaviour of Jimmy Page. He noted, The thing I've noticed about Jimmy Page whenever we meet is that he can't look me in the eye. Expanding on this observation, he added, Well, he ripped me off, didn't he? Or let's just say he learned from me. I wouldn't want to sound impolite. While Yanch could have probably pursued legal action against the band, he chose to let it slide. Now, before we get on to the next one, just a quick reminder to please press the like button below if you're enjoying the video. It really helps spread it to more people on YouTube and press the subscribe button below as well. That way you'll know when I put out a new video. I try to put out a new video every single Friday here on Music Mongoose. And a bit of a New Year's resolution for me. I'm really hoping to hit 10,000 subscribers by this time next year. So subscribing below would be a huge help and I'd really appreciate it. Right, next, let's talk about Whole Lotta Love. This time it's not the music itself, but actually the lyrics, according to Robert Plant. And once again, it's our friend Willie Dixon who serves as the original source. The 1962 track You Need Love, written by Dixon for Muddy Waters, forms the basis of this claim. The case reached a settlement in 1985, with Dixon receiving the compensation. Plant was candid about the blatant borrowing, stating in an interview with Musician Magazine, Page's riff was Page's riff. It was there before anything else. I just thought, well, what am I gonna sing? That was it, a nick, now happily paid for. Next, let's talk about the track, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. This was originally written by singer-songwriter Anne Breeden in the 1950s while a student at the University of California. The song gained traction in folk circles, and once Joan Baez released a live version in 1962, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You caught the attention of Jimmy Page. Page and Plant as well became big fans of the track. In fact, it's reported that Jimmy Page would actually play this song to entertain guests when they came over to visit his house. However, they only knew the song via Baez's album, and that song was mistakenly credited as traditional on that album. And so Led Zeppelin also credited the song as traditional while citing Jimmy Page as the person who arranged it. 
However, when Breeden found out about the Led Zeppelin version in the 80s, she decided to split the royalties with the band. And she's now listed as a co-author. To be fair, that one seems like a genuine mistake, all things considered, don't you think? The Lemon Song originated as a live cover of Howlin' Wolf's Killing Floor that they'd perform on tour. Gradually, it evolved into something new-ish. This one serves as another supposed homage to American blues, but again, they failed to give credit or seek permission where it was needed. When you listen to both songs, it's undeniable that Led Zeppelin lifted the song from Howlin' Wolf. The lyrics, the arrangement, the timing, it's plain to see, it's plagiarism. And it's totally understandable why critics would label this as a ripoff. In 1972, Led Zeppelin was sued by ARC Music. The case went to court, a settlement was reached, and now Chester Burnett, or Howlin' Wolf, has songwriter credit. And let's end this video on a plagiarism dispute that Led Zeppelin actually won. In March 2016, they successfully resolved a lengthy copyright dispute concerning the opening riff of their iconic song, Stairway to Heaven. They faced accusations of appropriating the song's opening riff from Taurus, a track by US psych rockers Spirit, recorded three years before. Now, had Robert Plant and Jimmy Page been liable to pay damages in this case, they would have had to pay it through the nose. I'm talking millions and millions. Led Zeppelin 4 has achieved global sales exceeding 37 million copies since its release on November 8th, 1971. Estimated royalties for the song reached around $562 million by 2008, a figure that predates the widespread adoption of streaming. During the five years of legal battles, Stairway to Heaven was estimated to have earned $3.4 million. The legal action was initiated in May 2014 by the estate of spirit guitarist Randy Wolf, known as Randy California, and bassist Mark Andes. The lawsuit was grounded in the claim that Led Zeppelin and Spirit had appeared on the same bill together in 1970, leading Spirit to believe that Led Zeppelin had access to the song. The case finally reached court in May 2016 with the judgment determining that Stairway to Heaven was not intrinsically similar to Taurus. Jimmy Page testified that he had never heard the Spirit tune before and found the comparison confusing. Now, the jury didn't accept that Led Zeppelin were unaware of the song, but they agreed with musicologists that the descending chord sequence in the song was simply a historical musical motif. Spirit's legal team appealed, arguing that the jury hadn't been able to listen to the entirety of their song. In 2018, the case was reopened, citing errors in the original case. However, the efforts proved futile, as in March 2020, the US Supreme Court rejected the appeal and upheld the 2016 judgment. For Page and Plant, this marked the end of the copyright case, and they were cleared of any infringement. Despite everything that we've discussed in this video, it can't be denied that Jimmy Page stands as one of the greatest guitar players of all time could possibly even be the best. Click the video here next to find out what makes him such a great guitar player, and I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose. All right then, bye bye.